All right, welcome back, everyone, or welcome for the first time. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon MLB DFS video. It is Saturday. It is May 13th. We have a slate full of baseball that we're going to bring to you. So if you haven't been here before, here is the deal. We're going to go through every single game on the slate. We're going to look at the pitching. We're going to look at those matchups. And then we're going to look at the bats. So uh, this is a ton of different information, um, way more than what we've started from in the past. These are all from your suggestions. So big shout out to everyone who suggested. Anyone looking for you know something else, what are you looking for? Let me know down below in the, in the comments. Would love to know. Always looking for... Um, a way to make these better or more informational for you. So if you guys are looking for certain things, building your lineup, sports betting, whatever it is, and you have a suggestion and you don't see us doing it here, let us know down below. And a big shout out to everyone who like takes the time to like the video, watch the video, and even the ones that are like, hey, I'm looking at Baseball Savant and listening to you and it's made my research or lineups building better. That's awesome. That's what we're here for. So big shout out. We're going to go through all of that. Also, if you are interested, we do offer premium content as well, and you can find that in the we can go find fantasyteamadvisor.com, but you can find it in the MLB tab here. You can find BVP matchups, which are all completely free. The stolen base targets free. Our cheat sheet is part of the premium content. Then you have the betting odds, the ballpark rankings, the optimal stacks, and then the FanDuel and DraftKings batter trends are part of the premium content as well. Like I said in the ver in a couple of videos ago, we're running a contest through the month of May. Anyone who signs up with uh, Anyone who signs up on the website using going to FTA Plus and signing up any of the packages is thrown into a chance to win the rest of the MLB season for free. Monthly pass is only $10, everybody. So check that out right there. Uh, $10 a month for a monthly pass as well. So that, co that contest runs through uh, the end of May, so the winner will be chosen on June 1st, so good luck. Other ways to win, like the video, be a subscriber, tell me who's going to hit home run and what inning they're going to hit it in. If you get that correct, you will be a winner. You'll get a free month of MLB DFS content. Also, another way to do it, anytime these videos get 50 likes, we will randomly choose a comment in the comment section with random.org, so make sure you leave a like a comment, and a subscribe to this channel. I'll, trying to hit 10,000 subscribers on here and Twitter at advisors underscore team before the All-Star break. So, that being said, let's check out what games we have on store for us today. We've got the Rays at the Yankees to start the day. Shane McClanahan versus Nestor Cortez. McClanahan, 83 plate appearances, 27.7K percentage, 237 batting average. Cortez, 105 plate appearances, 238 batting average, 16.2. So just looking at this, honestly, it, you don't know which Yankee team you're going to get. And most likely, you know what Tampa Bay team you're going to get. So Nestor has to be on. If we are looking for bats against McClanahan, Glaber, uh, on Friday, he led off. Whether or not he probably won't lead off today. It'll, Volpe was just getting a day off, I believe. Glaber, 6 for 14 with two doubles and a home run. Batting 429, he's seen McClanahan enough. Judge is 3 for 16 with a home run. DJ is 3 for 16 with a double. Rizzo, 2 for 11 with a home run. Agashioka, 1 for 5 with a home run. Um, yeah, I mean, if I'm taking Yankees bats out of all of these against McClanahan, I'm looking at Torres, uh, DJ, Judge, uh, Rizzo, Bader, um, Volpe, Cabrera. It really depends on the lineup. Um, but I, I would definitely mix and match different stacks from the Yankees. So of those players I just said. And then on the flip side of that, if Cortez is off like he has been in a couple of starts, hasn't looked his dominant self from last year, probably never going to go back to that, what batters have had success against him? Yandy Diaz, 6 for 21 with three doubles and a home run. Arosa Reina, 2 for 13 with a home run. Paredes, if he starts, which I don't know if he will, 3 for 10 with two home runs. Uh, Harold Ramirez, one home run. Taylor Walls, 1 for 10. That was a double. Brandon Lau, two for four with a double and a home run. So those are kind of the some of the bats. Um, I don't mind either of these pitchers. I think both are GPP-wise. I don't know if I'll put them in cash. Next game, you got Mariners at the Tigers. Bryce Miller versus Alex Fiedo, Fiedo. Uh 
It hasn't seen much. Um, until the, the numbers come out and the batter trends come out, I don't want anything to do with these pitchers or really the offenses. So I'm probably sticking just clear of this game. Uh, I, you know, it wouldn't be out of the norm to be outside of this game. And if you want to go a little exposure, you could do either pitcher for GPP just because never seen them before. Cheaper options for GPP. I don't mind that. You're not trusting in cash. Reds at the Marlins is next. Nick Lodolo versus Sandy Alcantara. Lodolo, 14 plate appearances, 273 batting average, only 14.3K percentage. And then the flip side, Alcantara, 41 plate appearances, a 205 batting average, striking out 34.1. I absolutely love Alcantara here um, for cash against Cincinnati at home. And then I'll take some Lodolo here for GPP-wise. I probably won't have any of the bats, though. I will be sticking towards just the pitching in this one. Next one, Cubs at the Twins. You got Hayden Wisniewski versus Joe Ryan. Wisniewski, 10 plate appearances, 300 batting average. Not much there. Probably not trusting him enough, though. And then the Twins, Joe Ryan, 24 plate appearances, 381 batting average, 333. Let's see. That's got to be just a couple of players, right? You would think. I'm guessing it's probably X. Uh, I'm going to say Dansby. Oh, Patrick Witt. Nope. See, the numbers are skewed there. Trey Mancini's 2 for 3, which puts it to 667. Tucker Barnard's 2 for 5, which puts it to 400. And then these 1 and 2, 1 and 2 for 500. So those numbers are up there. I That's inflated. I do love some Joe Ryan in this one. Probably won't have Wesneski here. Um, and I'd be looking at some of the Twins' bats-ish. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, no one's really seen them. So it's really hard to know who we're going to take. So until the batter trends come out, these are just the breaking down of the pitching. I would look at Joe Ryan, probably not looking at Wisniewski at all. Braves at the Blue Jays, Bryce Elder versus Jose Barrios. Elder hasn't say, faced any of them before. I'll throw him in a GPP. I just don't trust him in cash. And then Barrios against the Braves, 48 plate appearances, 8-3-26 batting average. He's just looked so bad in the past couple of years. He's had, he's had flashes of good. But, like, Matt Olson, 6 for 19 with two doubles and a home run. Absolutely love Matt Olson on this one. 316 batting average. Eddie Rosario, 2 for 6 with a double. Acuna, 3 for 3 with a home run. Yeah, I'm Ozzy Albies, 3 for 4. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at a Brave stack. Probably not going to be touching Barrios. And I would look at Elder for GPP. Next game. <laughs> Mets at the Nationals, Joey Lucchese versus Trevor Williams. Lucchese, 23 plate appearances, 238 batting average, only striking out 17.4. And then Trevor Williams, 84 plate appearances, a 257 batting average, a 20.2K percentage. I'm probably leaning towards probably neither of these guys. I know we've used Lucchese a couple of times this year, and he's had great success for us. And then we've used him a couple other times, and it's just looked terrible. Um, and I just don't trust Trevor Williams. I know the Mets on paper, they're really good. They're just not hitting. I don't, something at some time has to click, I really think. Uh, with the payroll they have, with the guys they have in that lineup, I just don't know when it's going to be. And it's, I, I, I guess you could tr throw Trevor Williams in here for GPP just because the, I believe the Mets have been shut out seven or eight times already this year, and last year they were only shut out a total of eight times. So it something's something's up in the clubhouse. I don't know. Something's going on. Um, so I'll take a flyer on Trevor Williams. Probably not looking at Lucchese here. Probably not looking at any of the bats, though. Rangers at the Athletics, John Gray versus J.P. Sears. We used uh, on Thursday night, absolutely loved Nate Evaldi against the A's, and he dominated for a career, I believe it was a career-high 12 Ks. John John Gray here, 51 plate appearances. <sighs> Low on the strikeouts career-wise, but he could get them strikeouts today. Uh, 190 batting average. I like John Gray just because it is in Oakland. It is against a bad team. And then on the flip side of that, uh, J.P. Sears against Texas, 54 plate appearances. 25.9K percentage, 292 batting average. What Texas bats are we looking at? Nate Lowe, 3 for 7 with a double. Uh, Marcus Simeon's 1 for 9 with a home run. Jonah Heim, 3 for 7 with a double and a home run. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely be looking at a, a stack here of probably Lowe, Heim, Simeon, uh, Josh Jung probably. 
don't mind Robbie Grossman. It really just depends on what lineup is out there. So I do like those guys. So I'm avoiding Sears, and I'm avoiding the A's offense. Cardinals at the Red Sox. Steven Matz versus Chris Sale. Steven Matz has looked so bad. So bad. So, so bad. It, it's unbelievable. Uh, the entire time he's been with the Cardinals. I can't recall one good start that he's ever had. If you can, let me know uh, without looking it up. Uh, Steven Matz against the Red Sox, 77 plate appearances, 338 batting average. The problem is Boston, they hit a lot of home. Fenway gives up a lot of runs, a lot of home runs. I am stacking the Red Sox here. Yeah, so the Red Sox bats that have had success, I'm just guessing it's going to be a Justin Turner. Uh, let's see. Probably Verdugo. Kike, I forgot Kike. Uh, from the, yeah, three Dodgers on this team that have seen him. Eight for 26, a double and a home run, bat 308. Justin Turner, four for 17 with a double and two home runs. Bobby Dahlbeck, two for seven with a triple and a home run. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at stacking some combination of the Red Sox. And on the flip side of that, Chris Sale, only six plate appearances, 167. He's looked good. Um, I will have exposure to Chris Sale until he gets hurt again. Um, he's looking good. His fastball's up there. I think it was 96, 98 the other day. Um, I would be looking at Chris Sale and a Red Sox stack against Steven Matz and the Cardinals. Angels at the Guardians is next. Reed Detmers versus Cal Quantrill. Detmers, 35 plate appearances, 281 batting average, 22.9K percentage. And then Quantrill here, 50 plate appearances, 333 batting average, 16K percentage. Not much going on. Um, I'll have probably no exposure to either of these pitchers. We will look at the bats, though. So the Guardians bats against Detmers that have had success. Ahmed, 3 for 7 with a double. Jose Ramirez, 2 for 6 with a double and a home run. Yeah. Uh I like those two. Um, I like Stephen Kwan, one for three. It really just depends, uh, the lineup out there. But I'll have some exposure to the Guardians. And then the Angels against Qu Quantrill here. If it loads. Mike Trout's two for five. I'll, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's 400, but it's, you know, five at-bats. Brandon Drury, I don't mind. Geo four for ten with a home run. I don't mind. He's still cheap. Shohei's one for five. I'll take a flyer on him. Taylor Ward, three for six. So, yeah, I will have exposure to this game. Um, I will not have exposure to either of these pitchers. And then when the batting trends come through and the cheat sheet, you can see that for yourself. Pittsburgh at Orioles. Contreras versus Tyler Wells. I mean, I I will have some exposure to Ro, uh, Roancy Contreras, GPP-wise. Won't be looking in cash. Um, and then... Tyler Wells. It just depends on what lineups are out there. Nothing at the moment sticks out to me. I'll have exposure to both of these pitchers in GPP. Zero in cash when I'm building with this game. Royals at the Brewers. You got Grinky versus Hauser. Grinky, 70 plate appearances, 212 batting average, 21.4K percentage. I don't trust Grinky. I would like this game a little bit more if it were in Kansas City. Um, but the whole motto the entire season, if you've been with us, stack against Grinky. And it has worked literally every single time. Stack against Zach Grinky. So what bats would you take? And the numbers he's had success in the past. But again, guys, he's throwing meatballs up there. Yelich, 8 for 27 with three doubles, batting almost 300. I'll have some exposure to him. Rowdy Telez wouldn't be surprised if he hits a home run in this one. Uh, Luke Voigt, if he's in there, which he might not be. Yeah, I mean, I'll have some exposure. It's not going to be a full Brewer stack, but there are some players I like in that. And then Hauser, 10 plate appearance, 300 batting average, so he's given up three hits. I am, I'll have some exposure to Hauser just because the Royals aren't very good this season, but I wish this game, I'll, I'll put my exposure down a little bit because this game is in Milwaukee and not Kansas City. Padres at the Dodgers is next. Joe Musgrove versus Julio Urias. Musgrove, 201 plate appearances, 300 batting average, 21.4K percentage. Urias, on the other hand, 161 plate appearances, 215 batting average, 19.3K percentage. So what bats have had success against Musgrove at a 300 clip? Muncie, 9 for 29 with three doubles. He's always in the box score batting 360. Freeman, 11 for 27, two doubles, a home run, and a triple. I'll have exposure there. 
I mean, Chris Taylor, 5 for 11 with a double and a home run. David Peralta, 7 for 21 with three doubles, a triple, and a home run. Yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a stack here of Dodgers against Musgrove. I won't have any exposure to Musgrove. And then what Padres bats have had success? I'm probably guessing Machado. Tatis would be an assumption. Machado, 13 for 32 with a double and four home runs. Yeah, I mean, Machado looking good there. Juan Soto, 1 for 23, but that one hit was a home run. Don't trust him. Cronenworth, 4 for 22 with a double and a home run. Kim, 3 for 14 with a double. So, yeah, I I don't know if I'll be stacking much of uh, Padres, but I will have exposure to Machado there against Urias. Astros at the White Sox is next. Brandon Belak versus Dylan Cease. Belak, 12 plate appearance, 300 batting average, so not much. Um, I believe he's normally a relief pitcher. And then Cease, 56 plate appearances, 37.5K percentage, 222 batting average. I will look at Cease here. Um, The Astros are still playing behind. They're missing a lot of players. So I will take the advantage and go Cease in pitching. No bats jump out at me at the moment. We will wait for the trends to come out. Then we get the Giants at the Diamondbacks, Desclafani versus Zach Gallon. Desclafani, 57 plate appearances, 228 batting average, only 14% K. So while he gave up five, I believe he gave up five runs his in the first inning, his last start, he stuck it out, I believe five or six, maybe seven innings, got the loss, uh, but his K percentage was down. So that's the problem. And then you got Zach Gallon, 84 plate appearances, 197 batting average, 28.6. I'm all over Zach Gallon in this one. I wish it were in San Francisco. It would make me feel a little bit better, but I will take Zach Gallon, and I will look at a, you know, Arizona stack of Corbin Carroll, Cattell Marte. Uh, let's see if they've had success against him. Yeah, Cattell Marte is 3 for 14 with a home run. Josh Rojas, 3 for 9 with two doubles. If he's there leading off, I love him. Uh, so I'll be looking at. Cattell, Josh Rojas, possibly Pavin Smith, and Corbin Carroll against Desclafani and Gallon there. Then the final game is the Phillies at the Rockies. You got Ranger Suarez versus Ryan Feltner. I will not be looking at either of these pitchers. I'll be looking at bats because it is Coors. So the Rockies bats against Suarez that have had success in the past come out to be, I mean, there's not much. CJ Crone, one for six with a home run. Jerks and Profar, one for seven with a double. Elias Diaz, three for six with a double. I mean, there's not a ton. Um, I won't have a lot of exposure to this game just because we do have the other ones, and the batters are all going to be pretty expensive. Um, But Philly's bats, just off the top of my head, I bet it's Schwarber, uh, Castellanos. Schwarber's one for six. Alec Bohm, one for three. Trey Turner's actually 0 for eight. Bryce Harper, two for four with a triple. Love Bryce Harper and Coors. Nick Castellanos, love him there as well. So I'd be looking at some of these. Wouldn't be surprised if I if I can fit in a cheaper pitcher and stack this game. I'm looking at like a Schwarber, Harper, uh, Bryson Stott, Castiano, some sort of mix in that one. So there you go. There you have it. Those are all of the pitchers and some of the bats that we like on this slate. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, email me or comment down below or hit us up on Twitter at advisors underscore team. And that's what I've got for you guys. Good luck on this Saturday. Have a great weekend and let's bring home some bacon. Peace.